Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for my new series, Fitting for Apparel Design. I know we're in a little bit of a different setting. I'm in the middle of um, getting my new studio together. So we're gonna just hang out on my couch. You might see my um, dog run by uh, every once in a while. So apologies in advance for the distractions, but I kind of like this environment. It feels a little bit more relaxed than my other videos. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's dive in. Um, this first section of fitting for apparel design is gonna go over pattern making and the importance of pattern making for you as a business owner, a brand owner, whatever it may be. Um, it's really important to understand pattern making because it really is the foundation of your garment. And when you're communicating with your factory or if you're communicating with your technical designer or other people within the fashion industry, it's really important to understand kind of um, how your garment is built and um, some of the terms behind it so that you can communicate effectively and it will save you so much time and money through the production process and design process that it's just so important to have an understanding of it kind of regardless of what your position is within your company whether you own it or you're working for another company it's just such an important part of the process to understand so what is pattern making pattern making is the foundation of your garment and to put it really simply it's plotting the measurements or specs of your garment onto a piece of paper so that you can create a template to cut out the fabric that is going to be used to create your garment. Um, you can use uh, measurements from a sample, you can use measurements from a person, from a fit model, from a form. Um, there's so many different options for how you can go about that and we'll get into that a little bit later. So typically pattern makers start with a sloper and that is basically just a really simple, simple pattern. It has no seam allowance, no design lines. Um, it has no style lines or ease in it. It's just super, super basic. And that is kind of like the building block for creating a stylized pattern. And so you'll hear me kind of reference sloper. Um, that is the pattern that we're going to be creating today. Um, and you'll hear me kind of um, referencing some different things. And so I've included a terms and tools description in the blog post. I'm not gonna walk through every single term on here because that is boring and you guys don't need to watch all of that. So if you are curious about the terms that I'm using, please go ahead and check out the blog post. It's linked down below um, and you can get a better idea of what those terms mean. And to make sure that we are channeling this back to fitting, because that's really what this whole series is about. Um, you're going to be taking that stylized pattern that your garment is created from, and you're gonna be fitting that garment that's been created by your factory um, or your pattern maker, whoever it may be. So you're going to be fitting that prototype and those fitting adjustments, which we'll talk about that in um, a later section of this series, those fitting adjustments are what is going to happen to your pattern. So that's why it's so important to understand pattern making and to understand those adjustments you're making, what that means for the pattern. So to help you understand how pattern making is going to affect the fit of your garment, I think the best way is to walk through um, creating a pattern piece together. So we aren't going to create a whole pattern for a garment because that will take forever. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, please. <laughs> She's moving my camera all around. <laughs> okay. If you're interested in creating your own patterns and you want to learn more about that, I'm hopefully going to do a more in-depth series on pattern making. So if that's something you're interested in, please comment below, let me know. Um, so I can fit that into the schedule going forward. If you are interested in creating your own patterns, I highly, highly recommend getting this book. I may have talked about this book in um, one of my other series, I'm not quite sure. But this is literally, you can see how many notes and stuff I have in it. I use this book all the time. This is the book that I used for university. This is the book that I always reference when I'm creating new patterns. It's, it's amazing. Um, it's called Pattern Making for Fashion Design and it's by um, Helen Joseph Armstrong. This is the fifth edition. They may have a newer one, um, but I definitely highly recommend this. Um, so if you are 
looking to um, learn more about creating patterns and some more in-depth stuff, there's so many tutorials online. Um, so we're not going to go into that. I'm really just trying to give you the basic foundation so that you can understand how your factory or your pattern maker is creating your pattern so that you can communicate with them and let them know about the changes that you're looking to make. All right, so first thing that we need to do is we need to determine who this pattern is for. Is it for a fit model? Is it for ourselves? Is it based off of a sample that we really love the fit of? Is it um, from our size chart? For me, for this example that we're going to be doing, we're gonna be using a size from my size chart. And if you don't know how to create a size chart or um, you wanna use a garment sample and you're wondering how to measure that, I have tutorials on those things. And I'll be sure to link those down below as well. And I also have pre-made size chart templates that you can use as well. Um, so, but for this, we're just gonna use a size eight from the size chart I already have made. So next thing that we need to do is we need to determine what the design intent of our garment is. What type of garment is it and what is the fit intent of that garment? So to use the example that I referenced in my blog post, imagine a woman who owns a pair of jeans and a pair of leggings. They both fit her perfectly, but you can imagine when they're off the body, the jeans look so much bigger than the leggings do. And that's because of the fabric that it's made out of, but also because of the fit intent of the garment. A pair of leggings is a bodycon fit, whereas a pair of jeans may be fitted, it could be boot cut, loose. Um, so you can see how the patterns would vary there. And um, the fabric is also going to be a huge part of this. Does the fabric have stretch or does it not have stretch? So for this example, we'll be creating a fitted bodice sloper and we'll be using muslin fabric. And that means that the fabric will not have any stretch to it. So now that we have an understanding of who we're designing for, what the garment is, the fabric, and the fit intent of that garment and fabric, we can go into creating our own pattern. Okay, so I'm just going to be walking you guys through the basics of drafting a um, sloper, just the front part of the sloper. And I'm not going to get into all the details because that's a whole post in and of itself, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through um, how to plot those points. I'm doing it at half scale so that it's easier for you guys to see everything, but normally you would be doing this on like a large piece of pattern paper. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a vertical line and it's going to be... For me, um, we're going to be marking from an A to B, and I need it to be, I'm going to do it, try to do it about in the middle of this piece of paper. And then we're going to mark. letters that signify those things. If you're interested in kind of knowing how I'm doing this and you want to learn more about that, definitely check out the book that I recommend um, in the other part of the video. And I'm only going to be walking you through um, the first like two-ish steps. Um, on paper and then I'm going to show you the rest of the steps on the computer so that you uh, don't have to sit through the same steps multiple times but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Okay, so as um, we finish up this pattern, you'll be able to see this will be the neckline, this will be the armhole, and then the side seam and dart will come up like this. 
and we'll continue the rest of this on the computer so that you can see it a little bit better and I can show you how I create my patterns in Illustrator. Now that you see how a pattern is created, you can see how changes to the fit of a garment in a fit session is going to affect the pattern. And we'll be talking more about this later on in the series. So I wanna to touch on a few principles or details about pattern making that you wanna keep in mind. Um, as you saw in the pattern that we just made, it has a dart on the pattern. And in any pattern that you're creating, you're going to be taking away full, fullness using darts or other um, design lines. And that fullness that you're taking away the way that you're contouring the pattern will always have to transfer in some way to a new stylized pattern. So if you're using a sloper like the one that we just created to create a stylized pattern, that dart needs to change and be manipulated to fit into the new pattern because you need to contour the garment to the body. So it's really important when you're communicating with your technical designer or even with your factory that you understand some basic pattern shapes so that you can um, speak and communicate in a way that makes sense to both of you. And so I have listed out in my blog post just some simple outlines of different pattern shapes so that you can start to understand what those shapes look like and you can identify them really quickly and really easily. There are two types of pattern manipulation techniques, and these two techniques are going to um, give you the same results, but they're two different ways of doing it. So there's slash and spread, where you're actually going to cut the pattern and then close one dart and open the new style line that you've created. And then that is actually manipulating the pattern that you've already created. So that is altering the paper pattern that you have. The other method does not alter the pattern that you've already created. So it's usually um, the one or the method that is most preferred. And that is the pivot method. And so usually the um, pattern maker will hold down the um, pivot point, which is the dart or the bust point with a pin or a um, you know instrument of some kind, like a pencil or a pen and will trace the pattern and then pivot using that central point to close one of the darts and then open the new dart. In my blog post, I've also included a diagram for um, pattern labels and markings. And this is just sort of an overview. So again, you can read patterns a little bit better when you're trying to communicate with your pattern maker or your factory. Um, and so I've pointed out some of the most common markings and you may see some um, more specific markings depending on what type of pattern it is, but this is a really good foundation for what you might see. All right, so let's talk about digital pattern making. And digital pattern making is basically everything we just talked about. It's built on the same principles. Um, it's created the same way. It's just put into a software that creates the pattern for you. So if you can imagine all the measurements and specs that we took, the specs that you're giving to your factory in your tech pack, those specs are what are being plugged into their software to create the patterns that your factory is going to use to then cut your fabric and make your garments. So the software plots the points um, it does a bunch of calculations and stuff, all the same calculations that are in books like these um, and does them, you know, obviously much quicker and does all these calculations to um, create the pattern that your factory will then be using. And if you are a home sewer, if you are a freelance pattern maker, um, or if you're someone like me, I mean, I'm a freelance designer and I use this method all the time, there is a way to create digital patterns um, at home. And you don't have to buy expensive software, it's probably a program that you already have. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about that too. So we have been fortunate enough to have Zochil, the Chicago pattern maker, guest post on the blog, and she talks in depth about her experience using StyleCAD and a 
plotter or a wide format printer for creating patterns for her clients. And so if you want to learn a little bit more about that, you should definitely check out the blog post. Um, I will also include links to her information down below. She has a really unique perspective and a really unique experience with these things. So I definitely recommend going and checking out the blog to see kind of her experience and what that was like. All right, so let's get into um, kind of my secret way of getting around having CAD software. CAD software is super expensive and um, a plotter is super expensive or a wide format printer um, is very expensive. And even going and getting your patterns printed are, um, that's really expensive. So um, you probably have seen print out PDF patterns and that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today. So you can print these at home, same way you would print out a PDF pattern that you download online. And um, we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator to create our digital patterns. So you probably already have this program, especially if you're in the fashion industry. Um, so there are two ways to digitize your patterns using Adobe Illustrator. Um, the first method is to just create it by hand like we did before, just like we did on paper, and then scan it into your computer using your scanner. Um, I don't prefer this method, but I have used it in the past, especially for um, patterns that I've already created or patterns that I have um, draped and then want to digitize. Um, so. The only thing is just to make sure that your computer is not scaling anything and you can double check that when you put it into Illustrator and then essentially you're just gonna you're just gonna trace over it. So the other method, method number two and which is my favorite is just to create your pattern just like we did before on paper but create it inside of Adobe Illustrator and Illustrator is great for this because it already has guides and grids and rulers. You can even set up your document to be in centimeters, inches, other um, formats as well, like pixels and stuff, but I prefer inches. And there's a bunch of really great little techniques that you can use to make this super seamless. You can also figure out the length of any line by going to your document info window and you can see what the length of a line is and that's really important in pattern making. They also have plugins that um, I reference in my blog post if you are interested in that. There's a plugin that you can buy where as you draw it'll tell you the length of a line which you know definitely saves you a lot of time if this is something you're going to be doing but there is a way around it by using the document info option. You can also create your very own curved rulers in um, Illustrator and I definitely recommend this. I have created my own curved rulers and um, we'll be talking about that in just a second. But uh, I definitely recommend this because there isn't really a way to have consistent curves inside of Illustrator. So having these rulers as objects in Illustrator is really, really helpful um, to make sure that you are getting the correct curves for pattern making. And if you're not sure what curves I'm talking about, definitely go check out the blog post where I talk about pattern making tools. You'll also want to be sure that you're using your layers to your advantage. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get into the digital grading part of this series. But using your layers is really important. Um, it can be great for comparing uh, patterns to each other. It can be great for nested grades. It has so many advantages. So definitely use your um, layers if you're not used to using them. There are also ways to use Illustrator scale and blend tools to grade your patterns to a certain extent. Again, we'll get more into this in the grading section of this series, but definitely keep in mind that there are those tools available to kind of make um, some quick um, changes to the scale of your patterns. Okay, so now that we have created this on our piece of paper, I'm going to walk you through the rest of the steps on um, the computer on Adobe Illustrator. So first thing I want to do is I want to go in and show my grid so that I can see um, all of these grid lines that are going to help um, me in creating the pattern. And I'm just going to line this up with one of them.
Okay, and then I'm also going to show the rulers and you can pull down on these rulers to create guides. Um, and then let's get into the next steps and I can show you guys some of those tips that I was talking about as we go through it. And what I usually do is I take um, my pen tool and just draw a line of any length and then I click it and go up here to change it to the length that I want it to be. And then I can put it into place where I want um, the lines to intersect. So I know it needs to intersect E and go from I, and I know this is the length it needs to be. So you just kind of have to, um, you know, play with it a little bit until you get it to line up where it needs to be. You can see that there. And be sure to keep labeling uh, your points. So in this case, I have this line drawn just uh, from the E line is drawn as a guide and I know I need to mark a point here. So I'm going to use one of these guides and just draw a line across to mark it. And then if the guides are bothering you, you can, um, you know, as you create them, you can go to guides, hide guides or clear guides, and then it'll disappear. Another option um, that you can do if you are just trying to figure out how long your line is, and perhaps it's like um, diagonal like this, you wouldn't be able to use this top part where it gives you the width and height. You would need to go into your document info, and this is what I was talking about before, and it'll show you the length of the line right here. And to get this window to pop up, all you need to do is go into window and then oops, window and then document info and then it'll pop up down here. You um, may have to go into the little menu on the side and then you can go into objects and that's where it's going to show you uh, what you're looking for. And if your lines start getting connected, um, which can kind of get annoying, you can just use your cut tool to make the line so that they're not connected. In some cases, I won't overlap my lines, like you can see um, here that I did the same thing and down here I'm going to do the same thing. Um, just so I can, when you're marking on a line, this will give you the measurement that you need, but sometimes you don't necessarily want these to like overlap, if that makes sense. So I'll just put it next to it and then uh, create my marking. And then we want our dart leg on the other side to be the same length so that we can sew it together. So we're going to cut this and all I have to do is just transform, reflect a copy, and then I can adjust it to um, go through the lines that it needs to go through. So it needs to go through the queue. So one of the downfalls of doing this on the computer is that you kind of have to like move your lines uh, and it's less like intuitive than just using a ruler. Um, that's why the plugin that I talked about is a really good option because you can just draw your lines and as you draw them, a little box will pop up. Um, and that is also, oh, look, they've added that on Illustrator now. I hadn't even realized that. So you can see as I'm drawing this line, it will tell me the length of it. That must be something new that they added. That is so cool. So you don't even need the plugin anymore. This will tell you no matter, you know, what angle your line is at, that 
how long the um, line is. So that actually makes it a lot easier than what I've been doing. But I was having to do essentially a workaround because I didn't want to pay for the plugin. Okay, so that's awesome. Um, another thing that you can do is you can go and you can change um, the distance that something moves. So like when you're selecting an object and you're using your arrow keys, you can set that up to be an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, you know, whatever you want it to be. And sometimes that's like a more helpful tool so that you're always um, moving things incrementally. And we'll talk more about that in the grading section because that becomes very, very important. So let's use this new thing that I just found. And I wonder if it'll, let's see, it'll connect there, which is, Oh, but see, look, it still will only say, so I need this to be five eighths. So that's going to be like as close as I can probably get in the center of these darts. Oh, that is such a cool tool. Guys, we just found that out together. I'm so excited. Okay. And then <laughs> we are going to redraw our dart legs. So then here is where our um, curved rulers are gonna come in handy. And I have just these really simplified ones. You can obviously make one that is, um, has all the measurements on it. And that is a part of the um, fitting DIY kit that we'll talk about later. And I am going to reflect this because I want the curve to be going in this other direction. And the cool thing about um, using these is if you copy and paste them, which I'm not sure I did actually, so let me just copy that. But instead of having to like draw over the top of this, which is an option, you can totally do that, but you can actually just like go in and, um, oops, cut this object and then just delete the rest of it. And there you have your curved line, which is like super handy. And I can't reiterate enough that, you know, I'm not doing this perfectly. We're just, we're just trying to go over the basics here. So if you are an experienced pattern maker, don't come after me. I am well aware this is not exactly perfect. <laughs> okay. So there's ba your basic outline. Um, and then here, I'll just show you guys kind of what the actual pattern would look like. I have a finished one over here. So I'm going to turn off um, the grid just so that you can see it a little bit easier. And here, let's just span this over the structure. And so there you go. And you can label it. Um, I have a whole labeling diagram in uh, the blog post and um, you know, label your bus point and everything. And then you can go ahead and use this and grade it. And we'll go over that later on in this series. If you are looking to print your um if you're looking to print your patterns i highly suggest creating a template and i'm going to show you just what mine looks like um and we can talk through it just a little bit okay so um let's go in to see what the printing format looks like i'm going to copy my pattern just so you can see what I'm talking about. And this is how I have mine set up. So I've just made a ton of artboards and then lined them up so that the edges are touching. So you can show your print tiling. Um, in some cases, you might be able to get your small, uh, smaller border, but for most printers, this is pretty standard. So just keep that in mind when you print it out. You're gonna tape all of your edges perfectly together and then you can kind of fill in the lines. So I try to kind of avoid having super like specific points overlapping um, here. And uh, so you can follow the other method that I talk about in my blog post where you 
are going to essentially cut your pattern piece and then I always mark mine with a star so that I can line it up perfectly again and this way you don't have to worry about your borders being in the way but that's just another way of doing it so let's talk about more about this method so I have all of my pages um, marked so I have row one row two row three row four and then column a b c d and that way I if my pages kind of print out weird, which has happened before, or if my printer skips a page, um, I can really easily kind of like figure out what's what, or if my pages get out of order or whatever. Um, so that has helped me quite a few times. So I definitely recommend doing that. And then all you do is you copy and paste your um, pattern on top. So like in this case, I wouldn't want my bus point to be where um, the print tiling is so I would kind of offset it just so that I'm just kind of filling in this line so the lines are already there for me I just kind of need to make sure that I'm taping them correctly and once you print them out you can also measure those lines and just make sure that they are the correct length um, just by double checking between illustrator and um, your pattern and all you have to do is go into your printer uh, you know go to file print and then you can um, say what pages you want to print from and i typically will like save this as a pdf i'll delete the other words and save it as a pdf and print it just because illustrator printing can be somewhat weird but you can totally print it from illustrator as well just make sure that it's not scaling anything when it's printing so choose do not scale and you can um, instead of deleting all your artboards you can just pick a range or um, certain pages that you want to print. And that is pretty much it. So if you've been following me on Instagram, you know I've been dropping a few little hints about a surprise uh, in this first section of this fitting series. And the surprise is that I am going to be releasing a new product and that is a fit kit. And what that is, is it's going to have the rulers that I just talked about. So it'll have digital rulers that you can use in Adobe Illustrator. Um, it'll have a fit sheet. So it'll have a comprehensive fit sheet that you can use during fit sessions. And it will have a sort of ebook guide that um, talks about fit issues and how to fix those so that you can kind of have that on hand whenever you need it during fit, fitting sessions or even when you're just, you know, kind of collaborating with your design team. It will include all the slopers that you need in a nested grade. So it'll be from, you know, extra small to extra large for women's and small to extra extra large for men's. Um, and you'll have all of those graded patterns all nested in a Adobe Illustrator document where you can print them out or you can edit them in the software. Um, so it's really great regardless if you have the program or not because you can just print these things out and use them. And I also just wanna let you guys know that all of my subscribers on my mailing list will be getting a 20% off discount um, when this launches straight to their inbox. So if you're interested in this product, I definitely recommend signing up. I also release monthly mood boards, trends, and inspiration. So you'll also be signed up for that. All right, guys, that was a ton of information. Um, I hope that you found this helpful and I really appreciate all of your support and I can't wait to get into the rest of the series. So um, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And please uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions or anything like that. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.